Today we're going to be talking about if you should be deactivating your social media or taking a break from it after your breakup. But more specifically because the answer to that question is pretty obvious, I would like to talk today about the power of social media and how it should be wielded after a breakup. Now, before I tell you if you should be deactivating your social media or what you should be doing with it, the first thing we should probably cover is whether or not you should be even trying to win an ex back or trying to get them back. And probably the best way to determine whether or not you're a good candidate for these type of systems or programs is to stop by my website www.exboyfriendrecovery.com and take my ex recovery chances quiz. It's a simple two minute quiz, it's free and it's designed to tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back just so you have kind of a starting point in whether or not you'll be wasting your time. So all you have to do if you want to take this simple free two minute quiz is simply look at the description link below this YouTube video and click on that big blue link you see below. With that out of the way, Let's talk about social media. All right, let's tackle the big topic first. Should you deactivate your social media after a breakup? And the answer to that question is a big resounding no. You should definitely not be deactivating or taking a break on social media after your breakup. The question now becomes what should you be doing with your time or skills on the social media? And ultimately, a lot of people try to make this into a crossroads type of a question. And the crossroads is simply, hey, maybe if you're trying to get next back, you act a certain way. And maybe if you're not trying to get next back, you act a different way. But what we have found is that there is actually a one size fits all strategy to handling things after a breakup. Now, let's hit pause for a minute and actually talk about some of the statistics with breakups and social media, just so you have kind of a general base knowledge to work from. So there are really two statistics that I'm going to throw out to you today, and these are researched by actual graduate students or actual companies that are doing research into how social media is impacting our lives. So the first big thing that we like to tell our clients when they come to work with us is there's a very high probability that your ex will be Facebook stalking you or checking you out on Instagram after your breakup. In fact, in 2012, a graduate student did an interesting study where they asked people going through breakups how many times they Facebook stalked their exes. It turns out that about 8.9 out of 10 people Facebook stalk their exes. So there's a 90% chance that your ex is going to be paying attention to what you're doing after a breakup. Now, I do want to say the one little fly in the ointment is that that study was done in 2012. And as you can know, Instagram wasn't really big, Snapchat wasn't really big, and things like that. So the dynamic has changed a little bit, but I have still found a huge probability of exes will be paying attention to what you're doing after a breakup. So that's the first statistic I'd like to throw your way. The second statistic actually has to do with cyber stalking. I actually came across this article last year where I was looking at cyber stalking and how often that happened in breakups. And what they found is if you block your ex or if you unfollow them to where they can't see what you're doing, they will actually go to a mutual friend or make a fake profile to friend you or use that friend as a go through to find out what you're up to. That kind of tells you there's a very high probability that your ex is going to be paying attention to what you're doing on social media. And that's why we think social media is one of the biggest tools that you can use after your breakup, especially during something like a no contact rule to make your ex pay attention and tell them or cultivate the image you want to have cultivated. So I like to switch gears for a little bit here and talk about some of the overall strategies that we're finding are working better than anything. And really, most people don't like what I do. They don't like the fact that I'm helping people try to recover their relationships. And what's interesting though, I found is that the more I've done this, there's a paradox that exists. See, a lot of people think that when you go through a breakup, you should just sort of let that person go and you know there's other fish in the sea and we know the whole story. Most of the time, exes don't want to do that immediately after the breakup. They want to get back and fix things as fast and as soon as possible, which causes them to push for a solution immediately. 
The paradox is most of the clients that I work with immediately want to get their exes back and they will do pretty much anything to make that happen. If they want to get their exes back, they first have to kind of move on from their ex. And while it is easy for me to display or explain this information to them, it is extremely hard for them to implement or embody it. So I talk about a lot of times, you'll hear on my YouTube channel or my podcast or on my website, you'll hear me talk about the ungettable mindset. Someone who is so powerful that they are almost ungettable. You know, they always leave men wanting more. It's the girl that he wants but can't ever get and it just kind of forces him to chase and on and on the cycle goes. I talk about this concept, not only because I know it works and I've seen it work, but it's this concept of kind of moving on and finding a better priority than your ex after a breakup. Now you may be sitting there and wondering why am I going on and on about this mindset stuff when this is supposed to be about social media, but it's important for you to understand the mindset for figuring out how to use social media. You see, if the name of the game is to try to get over your ex or show them that you don't care about the breakup anymore, there's probably no better tool to indirectly explain that to them than social media. In other words, social media is a vast tool that allows you to cultivate the image that you want to have cultivated, to act a certain way to elicit a certain response from an ex. Now there is a spectrum to this type of behavior. You know, one of the first things I tell people is do not go to the deep end here. You know, if you want to show your ex that you don't care so much about the breakup anymore, don't go out, date someone new and post a picture of you making out with them on social media. That's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is more of an internal process. It's about getting into the right headspace emotionally and philosophically, and then posting pictures or videos of things that you are doing that are making you happy. This is another big problem that I see on my private Facebook support group. If you don't know, anyone who signs up for our program gets access to this really large community of people who are also going through breakups. Basically, it's a place where you can commune with other people going through breakups, working on the same material you are from my ex recovery program. The problem is a lot of times when we talk about social media, we talk about very tactical approaches. Approaches like, hey, post a picture where you're two thirds of the subject or something like that, right? You can actually go look at some of the YouTube videos I've done on social media before to see some of these tactical approaches. But the tactical approach really only works if you have the strategy correct. And the strategy here is to get into the right headspace emotionally. The problem is most of the people in the Facebook group act like they're happy. They act like they don't care anymore. They act like they're moving on with their life. And so they post a picture of them doing that, of them acting. Yet there's something false about the photo. There's something you can see about it being a little too forced versus someone who takes the time to actually get to that headspace emotionally. And while it may take a lot of time, there's a difference between the vibes that an ex picks up when they pay attention to that photo or that approach during social media but I still haven't gotten to the specifics about how you should be using social media, so let's talk about that now. So, we've talked about the strategy behind social media, getting to the right headspace, kind of moving on without moving on, figuring out something that's a little bit more important than your ex, but we haven't really talked about the tactical approaches. So, Obviously, social media is a great tool because you can post pictures, you can have conversations with people in the comments, you can post videos, you can kind of do status updates, and all of that is kind of cool. We can talk tactically about this forever, but what I'd really like to talk to you about is actually frequency. So a lot of people think that when they go through my program, they need to be a lot more frequent with how they post on social media, and that's simply not the case. What you need to do is kind of maybe up it a notch. So let's say that you were posting three posts per week on your Instagram or social media, other platforms, I don't know what you have. Let's say you're posting three posts on average a week. It kind of looks like you're trying too hard if you all of a sudden you start posting 10 to 20 posts per week. And while it's kind of cool that you're getting into social media again, there's no reason to turn the dial up that much. So what we're looking to do is to turn it up maybe a notch or two. So let's say you're posting three a week, maybe instead post five a week. But what's important is you want to put a lot of thought and energy into what you're posting. Don't post something that is 
kind of just normal, post something that's a little outside the norm and also exciting. Something that will be intriguing, that will make people pay attention to what you're doing. Here's the general rule of thumb, right? So th if, if there's nothing else you take from this video, it should be this advice right here. If you post something and get attention of a bunch of other men, you're doing social media right. Hey there, thanks so much for making it to the end of this video. Again, if you haven't already, make sure you take that quiz that I was talking about at the beginning of this video. All you have to do is simply look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on that blue link you see there. Also, if you haven't liked, commented, or subscribed, please do so. Every little bit helps. I'll see you next time.